In years past, my circuitry projects have been restricted to breadboards and crude protoboards and whatever this is. To bring the inventions created at Dragline Dynamics to the next level, it's time to institute a better way. This is a circuit board stock. It's a fiberglass sheet coated with copper. And this is a customized Genmitsu 3018 CNC mill. I've already tested this machine out with various aluminum parts, but we can also use it on circuit board stock. By selectively machining away the copper, we can create conductive pathways and mounting holes for a complete customized circuit board. The boards we can make with this method will allow for sleeker, shallower inventions where the electronics take up less space because we know from the world we live in that there's no reason for simple electronics to take up a massive amount of space. At least, that's the theory. We start by designing the circuits we want to create. I'm going to design necessary circuits for the second version of my most advanced web shooter. These will include various driver modules containing transistors that will constitute the H-bridge for the motor driver, as well as the transistor that works as the Peltier module driver, and a 5 volt regulator. I will also design a microcontroller board using an ATmega328P chip, and an interface board containing buttons and LEDs. I'm using Fritzing to design these circuits. It's a great tool with tons of included components, like the transistors and resistors I need for this design. Once these are designed, we can take the resulting vector graphics into Fusion 360 and design the operations for CAM, or computer-aided machining. I ran into a slight issue with the Fritzing output. The smallest tool I have has a diameter of 0.75 millimeters, which is slightly big to cut out the closest spaces between holes. But a slight modification fixed that, where I cut off some of the copper material so that the tool could pass between. And with that, the toolpath was generated, consisting of a contoured outline of the copper traces, followed by adaptive clearing of the remaining material. So, looks like we're in business. Wow, I can't believe it was that easy. I can't believe it was that easy. I can't... Well, yep, yep, there it is. So, a slight problem. Turns out, I was cutting too deep almost a whole millimeter instead of the intended 0.5, meaning that in certain places, it had cut right through the board. I modified the tool path to only cut 0.2 millimeters deep, and I made sure, just to be extra safe, to set the z-axis to zero at 0.1 millimeters above the actual zero. And the result there was also not stellar. Here, it didn't cut deep enough, and still seemed to cut deeper in some places as opposed to others. This result, coupled with the earlier one with the too deep cut, gave me two explanations for my issues. Either the machine axes are way out of tram, meaning they aren't perpendicular, or the protoboard stock itself is just too hard to mount so that it's perfectly flat. And let me tell you, I was on the case. I measured the altitude of several points on the machine table and on the circuit board so I could get an idea of which one was causing the issues, but the numbers I got couldn't account for the massive discrepancies I was experiencing. I thought maybe the tool had been damaged during cutting, but no, it was in pristine condition. Confused, I panicked. I realized maybe the science of measurement wasn't as exact as everyone thought. Maybe science itself was just a lie, perpetuated by centuries of fear that the universe is inherently inexplicable, unpredictable, and completely meaningless. Yeah, so I just adjusted the work holding and then it succeeded. Hey you, can we just forget that that whole existential crisis thing just happened? Can we, can we just forget that? Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. Anyway, after polishing the workpiece and making sure the traces were functioning, the result was really starting to look and feel like a circuit board. Next were the component pinholes to which the actual circuit elements can be soldered. Now these holes at 0.85 millimeters are slightly bigger than the diameter of my tool, so I can't do a simple drilling operation. Instead, the tool actually follows a slightly helical path, moving in a circle in the XY plane while plunging in the Z direction. Fairly straightforward enough. And yep, looks like this was no problem, except while your average resistor fits into these holes just fine, the transistor pins are just barely too big, so I'll just mill an extra 0.1 millimeter off the radius for the transistor pinholes only. So now might be a good time for me to outline how I'm implementing the G-code on my machine. Given the Fusion 360 output, which basically just consists of the points necessary for the operations, I'll simply add a few lines at the beginning and at the end of the G-code. Before every program runs, I just make sure the tool is located at the origin of the operation. That is when the coordinates of the tool are x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. 
Then, this first line, G92, calibrates the machine's position so that it is understood by the machine as the origin. That's basically saying this is so the machine knows where the tool is in space, to start. Then, I command the tool to lift up to an altitude of 11 millimeters, then move to the X and Y coordinates of the first operation, and then the operation can commence, lowering to the correct Z. This is all to make sure that the tool doesn't interact with the workpiece before any of the intended milling operations. Finally, at the end of the G-code, in addition to the tool raising back to Z equals 11 millimeters, I add a movement back to X and Y equals zero, and then lower the tool back to Z equals zero, so that the tool is once again at the origin and ready for another file with this same format to run on the same workpiece. Anyway, now the transistor fits. How about that? The last operation I'd like to do before separating the circuit board from the stock is the addition of mounting holes for the whole circuit board, which I may or may not use, but they're nice to have anyway. Now finally, after all that, I can cut out the circuit board from the rest of the stock using a simple contour cut. All of the operations I've described to make this circuit board took about 15 hours in total machining time, but I promise you by the end of this video, I'll be able to cut that number in half. Now, let's take a look at the result. Now, it looks pretty good, but the base is admittedly quite thin compared to the original stock. It looks like it is machined too deep again, leaving only a 0.5 millimeter thickness in the fiberglass. Nevertheless, it should still work, right? Right? After making sure the board was as square as a hand-built CNC is able to achieve, I realized there was another layer of copper on the other side. Oh no, this is, this is not good. This is not good at all. All of my components will be shorted out if I try to attach them to this board. I can't believe this. I thought I was just painted black for aesthetic purposes, but no, it was to make my life harder. Okay, only one solution if I still wanna test how this board works. Sand it off, sand it all off. Hmm, wait a minute. Looks like there's now only a third of a millimeter left in the thickness of the fiberglass. So this is like, paper thin now. I'm sure it won't be a problem. After sanding off an entire layer of copper, as well as most of my fingertips, I was ready to solder the components to the board. For my new web shooter design, I've selected these small connectors to link each of the modules together, to prevent the mess of wiring that came to define the original model. After soldering all the components on, the circuit was ready to test, but I decided to get another module circuit board going on the CNC while I was doing that. But I decided to save myself a lot of headaches by using the higher quality piece of circuit board stock I had. This one is 1.5 millimeters thick as opposed to just one millimeter, so I hope to avoid the paper thin monstrosity that my first go around generated. Additionally, this stock certainly only has one layer of copper on one side. I'm sure of it. No guys, this time I'm really sure of it. There's no foreshadowing here. After redoing all of the operations as described for the previous circuit board, the new circuit board was ready for milling. Only this time, I was able to cut the total processing time down to about seven hours, just by being a little more adventurous with my speeds and feeds. Go figure. Previously, I was cutting the contours at about 10 millimeters per minute with a tool engagement of 0.1 millimeters, whereas now I'm cutting at 30 millimeters per minute with a tool engagement of 0.5 millimeters. Additionally, instead of doing the final cutout with multiple altitude step downs, I did it with a single depth. And I'm surprised and pleased to say this 100% worked. All right, so I was testing this out and um, interesting things happened. So let's, let's, let's go through the positives. So, so there's two things on this, this board. This is the third driver module for the web shooter. Um, the, there's two things. There's the temperature driver, which consists of a a single MOSFET, that's this one right here, and then there's the 5 volt regulator for the digital logic, which is this right here. And so what I can tell you is that, uh, let's see, this is the output of the 5 volt. Um, between this and ground, we do indeed get 5 volts, or close enough, but the issue is that uh, the temperature driver doesn't work, 
As you can see, I'm trying it with a Peltier module. So I did some investigating and I found out that one of the traces on the circuit board is erroneous. So basically, you see the trace going, so uh, this is the underside of the uh, bipolar junction transistor. Middle pin of that BJT is the base of that transistor. Um, and you can see I have it going from uh, this resistor, which goes to the input of the driver, just as it's supposed to. So that's supposed to go to the base of the BJT. Then I have it going to the gate of the driver of that uh, transistor. That is wrong. <laughs> it's supposed to um, not go there. In fact, the gate is actually supposed to be connected to the other resistor. It's supposed to be connected here, which is the collector. So this trace should be going here, not here. Okay, so that mistake was a pretty dumb mistake. It basically turns my intended driver circuit from this to this. And this doesn't make any sense. Luckily, I had an operation that could eliminate the incorrect trace, which I could then correct during soldering. It's not ideal, but it will save me a lot of time. All right, so this came out pretty nice, I think. Um, obviously, like, <laughs> loads better than this paper-thin monstrosity we have here. This uh, is obviously a lot sturdier. Let's see, it's about 1.37 thick at the thinnest part. So that's uh, a lot nicer than what we had before. Very sturdy. I'm gonna sand this off a bit and uh, clean off some of the rough edges. All right, so this looks really good. I'm really liking this. Only thing with this, as you can see here, that's where I removed the erroneous trace. You can see it used to be there. So instead of there, um, I need to connect uh, these two somehow instead. So I'm gonna just basically add like a little wire to do that. Also, I'm even more certain that this one doesn't have copper on the other side because you can straight up see through it. So I'm pretty sure this is just the fiberglass and then only one copper layer, which is exactly what we want and it's not what we had on the last one. I do wanna mention that I am sort of mixing types of transistors as well as using types of transistors that are similar but not uh, exactly the same as what I've used for these devices in the past. So, you know, it's a learning experience all around. Can you make these two transistors work together in an H bridge? We're gonna find out. <laughs> finished driver two board. Um, this is one half of the H bridge that controls the motor. So as you can see, a uh, very low profile, definitely just gonna be like one of many uh, modules that goes around the wrist like so. Obviously, you've yet to see if it actually works. Uh, I'm gonna get another program running on the CNC overnight, um, and then hopefully I can start to put some of these together and uh, start to see if they work. Um, I mean, I can't think of a reason it won't work. Whatever the outcome, we will learn something. And that's the most important thing, isn't it? Okay, so uh, as you guys can see, my desk has gotten pretty messy, but uh, we've, we've done some more circuit boards here, as you can see. Um, so this one is done. A new version of the third driver module that originally was uh, this awful one. We have the first driver module, button pad, LCD screen, and LED panel. And just finished on the CNC, controller circuit board. On here will be mounted the microcontroller integrated circuit. We're no longer using Arduino. We're simply using Arduino compatible microcontroller chips so that our 
designs can be much smaller. So this video is already pretty long, so I think the assembling and testing of these will have to wait for another time. Sorry about that, guys, and sorry about the noise. That's the next video. <laughs> we at least are making pretty nice circuit boards. I haven't finished these yet. This one's been uh, polished, so um, the, the shine is quite nice. I'm sure it'll solder very well. This one soldered fantastically. There's also a motor module and the main module, of course, but those are pretty straightforward compared to these. Um, I'll show you what the modules are supposed to look like. Okay, so basically the idea is going to be you have the main module here with the web fluid inside. Um, watch my original video if you haven't. It's going to be pretty much the same except more reliable and expertly put together. And then you have these modules around the, around the side. So basically my approach now is number one, more compact circuitry using these custom circuit boards and spread out the electronics more in longitude and latitude. Oh, that's my suit battery is done charging. So yeah, it'll look something like this with the modules wrapped around the side. If you think about sort of the classic like sort of ribbed web shooter design or like Ben Riley, where you have the cartridges around the end like a carousel. I have a cool video on sort of a variation on that by the way that you should definitely watch. Yeah, so it's basically just gonna look something like this. The actual design uh, is not finished yet, but I figured the circuitry would be a big bottleneck. So I still have to design circuits for this one. That one should be really straightforward compared to the other ones. Um, then design the casing for each one. Uh, the hardest part is probably going to be machining an aluminum body here. If I can't get that done in time, I will just provide the original aluminum body and figure out how to use that. That's the same aluminum body that you've seen me use for the past year. The original video for that one is almost a year old now. Yeah, that's basically the plan. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to, if you haven't already, this is the web shooter that I am raffling off currently. The current raffle participants, you can see on the screen, uh, these people basically entered by donating at least $50 to my Patreon. Um, trust me, this web shooter will be worth a lot more than $50. Don't worry, I'm gonna make sure you have everything you need to make it work, including web fluid and canisters, cartridges, and the like. Um, I'm hoping to do the drawing on December 1st. I'm definitely in crunch time for designing this thing right now. I'm gonna do my best, and then I'm hopefully gonna get it out to people by Christmas. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, if you didn't, then um, I hope you watched till the end. <laughs> And but, which I guess you would only do if you if you hated yourself. I'm sorry, it's really late. So uh, I'm just gonna sign off. Uh, stay safe, stay amazing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. There's a lot of cool stuff coming. I, I can't wait for you to see it. Okay, bye bye.